I welcome you to this 216th celebration of the Nativity of Our Lord at St. Michael's Lutheran Church. Please stand if you are able. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To us is born this day in the city of David, who is Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Sing to God something brand new, for God has done wonderful things. God has not forgotten to love us all. Even the ends of the earth have heard. Make a joyful noise, break forth in song with strings and horns. Sing praise to the Holy One, with the roaring sea and everything in it, with all the land and everything in it. The floods clap their hands, the hills sing for joy. Thank God, God is coming to set everything right. Justice for everyone, everything fair. Sing to God something brand new, for God has done wonderful things. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
invite you to stand if you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated. Hope, oh, stand, stay standing. Well, we've had quite a year, and you can tell by how we are sort of cis distanced and masked and say, you know, sort of all the, the, the things that we've done to our liturgy to sort of twitch it up, that uh, we're trying to remain safe and sound in the midst of all this craziness. Um, I hope that 2021 will be better. I'm not so sure that it will be much better until the middle of the year, but, but we keep hoping and we keep faith that God is with us in all that we do. When I think about this reading from Luke, it's one of my favorites, and part of it is because there's a lot more to it than you think. There's a lot more depth and a lot more to the story than what we generally think. When we look at our manger scenes, we see one or two shepherds sort of standing there silently with their lambs on their shoulders or their lambs at their feet. 
And we think about the fact that they have just sort of wandered up to the manger and, and are just looking at Jesus and looking at Mary and Joseph. But that isn't the story. The story is so much more incredible, so much more astonishing. Now, you often will hear that, that shepherds were sort of uh, outcasts in society, but it's not actually true. They were not considered clean, and so they really had trouble with uh, being righteous or being religious um, in their time. Part of it was that when they lived out in the hills with their sheep and, and with the way that they had to, to touch you know, animals to protect their sheep and do all that stuff, they ritually could not be clean. And so you know, those that were shepherds were away from their homes for long periods of time. They were uh, ritually not clean. People looked down on them, but they certainly didn't look down on them when they needed a nice roast lamb. But they served a purpose for the community, and people sort of tolerated them. And, and that's not at all the way that God sees shepherds. Why, when we think about Psalm 23, when we think about uh, all the different uh, allusions to shepherding that happen in Scripture, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, we should actually have a much higher regard for shepherds. But really, when you think about it, they were alone on these barren hills of Judea around Bethlehem on a cool, starlit night, just minding their own business, hanging out with the sheep. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden out of a clear, dark sky comes an angel messenger. And the angel messenger very much like Gabriel to Mary, speaks to them about good news, speaks to them about, about their salvation, speaks to them about their change in status, speaks to them that God has favored them with this good news. And, you know, that would be amazing enough. You know, I think some of the shepherds might have thought that they had done something... Uh, a little crazy and you know maybe gotten into something they were hallucinating one angel might be in a hallucination but all of a sudden like a bunch of searchlights the the sky lights up and 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 the sky is filled with the heavenly host and they are singing and praising God and they are they are basically inspiring these shepherds with the good news that God is going to do something new and different that God is going to take the way things have been done and turn it upside down. They had a choice. Those shepherds had a choice. You know, they could have thought to themselves as they sat there with their sheep, wow, that was cool. We'll just keep hanging out here, right? They didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to react. But they were compelled to. They were driven out of the hills with their sheep into the town of Bethlehem. And, you know, you don't really notice it in the scripture until you start to think about it and you read it more carefully. They were not sort of slinking into town. They weren't, they weren't sort of sneaking in to see what they could see and then sneaking back out. They were celebrating. They were telling everybody what the angels had said to them. They were talking about what God was doing. They were talking about how God was in the midst of them. And you can imagine when they got to the, the place where Jesus and Mary and Joseph were that, that it probably felt more like a party than a funeral. The other thing that we sometimes don't really think of is when we see our beautiful nativity scenes and we see the, the beautiful crash, we think of it as sort of off into a corner and, and kind of a quiet, uh, restful place. We don't really think of it as being in the middle of a town. But in actuality, the place where Jesus was most likely born was on the first floor of a building where the animals were kept. And the family lived on the second floor. And on the roof of the building is where on cool nights they would sleep. And so you had sort of these three levels of this house. And the animals in the wintertime actually kept the whole house warm. 
by the heat from their bodies. And this would not have been off in a secluded corner. This would have been right in the middle of town. This would have been right in the, in the, at the crossroads of what was going on in Bethlehem. One of my favorite nativity scenes of the many that I have at home is one that is from Italy. And it amazes me because it has so many characters, so many different figures. Not just a couple of shepherds, but a whole bunch of them. And not just a couple of sheep, like one laying down and one standing up, that's what most nativity scenes have, but it has 25 sheep. <laughs> They're all over the place. You can't really put them all like in one section of the, of the place where the, where the creche is because there's too many of them. And there's cats and bunnies and roosters and chickens and pigeons. There's also townspeople. And they look not like they're standing and admiring Jesus, but they look as if they're busy going about their day. There's a beekeeper with a hive on his back. There's a, a woman carrying a bundle of sticks, and there's a guy on his knees blowing a fire, a campfire. There's a woman with geese, and there's a woman with a jug of water. And they just seem to be living their lives in this wonderful sort of crossroads of Bethlehem. Those were the people that the shepherds told about what the angels had said to them. They didn't keep it to themselves. And it was not a quiet, bucolic moment. It was, it was probably pandemonium. That is to say that Jesus interrupted the world by his birth. The world didn't stop spinning. The world didn't stop, people didn't stop living. They acted on the message that the angel told them. Even though they probably felt that they were not adequate to the task. I also wonder about what Mary was thinking. And I love in Luke when it says that Mary pondered these words in her heart. Isn't that a beautiful phrase, a beautiful turn of a phrase? But we forget that Mary is a young girl. 14 or 15 years old. And we forget the turmoil that she's been through in the last nine months. She was engaged to a solid man named Joseph, and all of a sudden she found herself pregnant. And yeah, the angel Gabriel told her all about it. The angel Gabriel explained to her what was happening, but it had to have been terrifying. And then to be uprooted in the middle of her pregnancy to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And then to find in Bethlehem that there was no real comfortable place for her to go. That she had to, to lay with the beasts of the farm in order to birth her child. It would have been reasonable for Mary to have questioned God. Would have been reasonable for Mary to have sort of asked God at that moment, kind of, what are you doing here? What's happening? Why is it going this way? But she didn't. She, she heard the confirmation of who her son was by the words of the shepherd and another angelic messenger. As we live our lives, as we go about our days, God gives us a, a, a chart and a path for us to follow. And we make the decision about whether we will be the one that spreads the good news. Will we be the one who brings light and not darkness? Are we the ones that will speak a word of peace, not conflict? Are we the ones who will offer a hand, a gesture to someone who we have disagreed with or someone who we uh, have been separated from. Sadly, we don't get those angel messengers and lit up skies. Wouldn't it be nice if every time we needed to hear a little bit of good news or every time we needed to be reminded of how wonderful God is for us, 
or how God is present with us in, in our hurting and in our grief? Wouldn't it be nice if the skies opened up and the angels showed up and started singing? But tonight, tonight, we hear the words of the angels and we follow the witness of those shepherds who simply could not keep the good news to themselves, who simply could not lay back down with their sheep and could not go and worship the baby born in Bethlehem. So as we struggle through this pandemic, as we struggle through the conflicts in our country over politics and, and justice and all the different things that we are, are, are fussing about with each other, may we be those who speak a word of God's interruption, God's interruption in the way the world works. The angel said to the shepherds, the low will be made high. The powerful will be weak. Those who control will have that control taken away from them. The kingdom of God is at hand. If we truly live that kingdom, we cannot help but share good news. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I invite you to stand if you are able. Let us pray. Holy God, your beauty shines forth from the manger and your love flows from the cross. As you gather us around, these signs of your love come among us. Warm us to extend your care among the hungry and all in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, the bright morning star, shines light in the world. By day and night he shines for all to see. Jesus was born in the midst of injustice and poverty, that the world may see the justice and richness of God. God so loved the world that God sent Jesus, so that all who believe in him may not perish but have eternal life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of our lives. Sing to God a new song, a song of hope, joy, and peace around the world. Amen.
Many ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth and then formed man and woman in his own image, long after the great flood when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant, 21 centuries from the time the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah, 13 centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt and Miriam danced in freedom, 1,100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges, 1,000 years from the anointing of David as king, in fulfillment of the times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets. In the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, while the whole world enjoyed a span of peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit and nine months of growth in the womb of his mother, now in our own times is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh.
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Good yeah, the trio sounds great. Oh, thanks. That was impressive. I like my ball set up. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> up. I worked on that for a while. Yeah, I like my full set of years. This is good. I thought I had a good one. <laughs> Not as good as I think it is. No, Alto is a soprano, so I had to learn how to sing those parts myself. Nice. Well, it's great seeing you, man. Yeah.